Welcome to GothCast, I'm Dr. Sanders, and today is World Goth Day. A day for everyone around the planet to realize that being goth is the most awesome thing you can ever do. Or something like that. That's what, is that what they're supposed to be for? Right? Well, anyway, this is a day where we can all celebrate how awesome it is to be kooky, spooky, altogether ooky. Really remind ourselves of why we are goth and what is so awesome about being goth, you know, being able to express yourself in a way that while some people may not understand it, you know, you have a community around you that really does and relates to you. But of course you can celebrate being goth every single day. So just like any holiday, you know, just know that there's going to be some articles that pop up saying, Hey, world goth day is today. So remember that goth is a thing. That's probably what a ton of them say. I've seen a few like that, but the point is, because it's World Goth Day, I wanted to take a look at a very particular book, one that I thought was very fitting for this particular day, and that is Worldwide Gothic by Natasha Scharf. A book about goth and how it evolved from, you know, its humble beginnings to current, or well, 2011 times, and how different countries evolved their own scenes and were influenced by many different bands. Now, if that name sounds familiar to you, Natasha Scharf, you may remember when I did the book review on The Art of Gothic. This was actually the first book that she did, and it was published in 2011. So, you know, The Art of Gothic came out in 2014, and she hasn't published a new book since. But you gotta keep in mind that Natasha Scharf has been involved with goth for a very long time. Longer than most other authors who just pick a one-off book to, you know, to write about goth, what they think it might be. Uh, and not really the, understand the workings of it and how vast it is. Natasha does a really great thing because she has hosted radio shows, she's done some stuff with the BBC on Goth. You know, if you know me, you know that I do like to read a lot of books and I love history and I love it whenever somebody can take a, you know, what might seem boring or just a lot of dry information and turn it into a narrative that is engaging. And I think this book does that for the most part. You know, while it could have just been presented as, you know, here's a list of facts or, uh, well, this band became popular and then this band did it. But the book does do a really good job of writing it in a way that's engaging. And I really like that. And talking about how this album sounded a little bit different from this album and this album sounded a little bit different from that one and pushed the sound a little bit more into, a, you know, a more punk direction or a little more new wave. And I think it... I think it does a really good job of that. You know, even without hearing all the music in the book, I think that you could still, you know, find it engaging. Although I'm not sure if the book would be wholly interesting for somebody who is not into goth music, but obviously that's that's not really who the market for this book is. Uh, I actually think the art of gothic, which came out later, is probably if you know nothing about goth, then that's the book to probably buy. But worldwide gothic is really interesting in that if you're only familiar with you know American goth scene or you're only familiar with the UK goth scene which are probably the two that most people reference uh, this book really paints a portrait of other countries and you know others you know places like Finland and Italy and all these other really interesting places I like how uh, it talks about how China basically has like no goth scene or it talks about Japan's visual key movement I think, I think that's how you say that, right? It really covers so many things and I feel like it does a really good job of covering just enough information about it. You know, it while you could dive in and do a whole book about, you know, California Death Rock or something like that, this does a good job of balancing enough information and interviews with people to give you enough to be like, okay, you know, I want to go listen to those albums and I feel like I got a, a, you know, enough of a grasp on how this scene was different than the scene, you know, how the scene in California was different than the scene in Birmingham. I think that's, a, you know, tell of a really good book. Obviously, it's hard for me to be not biased on this a little bit because this information, you know, a book about goth is very interesting to me no matter what, you know, to see if I know the bands or if, it's, if there's any new albums that I can check out. And, you know, I... <laughs> Because of that, I mean, the book's probably going to be interesting somewhat anyway. But I think even outside of that, even outside of my very deep interest in goth, that 
even if somebody wasn't really familiar with it, they would find the stories in here really interesting because it, you know, you have a lot of bands who talk about their shifting sound over the years, you know, going from punk to going to more of a gothic sound and talking about their influences from horror movies and, and oh, like in some a remote place that was way far away from these bands, somehow this album got there and was hugely influential and created a whole bunch of other bands. So I think just even that aspect of it is super interesting because you see how goth has spread so far with, you know, only a very short amount of time where it was played on the radio. One of my favorite parts of this book, uh, especially growing up in the time period I did, is learning how the scene evolved through technology. So when you have bands starting out where, you know, album sales like of vinyl was the only thing or cassettes, uh, and then how it transferred into the digital age of how the internet influenced goth. And I really like the way this book addresses that. It talks about, you know, news groups, you know, the alt.gothic and how there'd be blogs and all these, all these different things that came in. And I like how it doesn't necessarily say that this is all good <laughs> because, you know, some people, some people might have real big nostalgia for that or like early internet goth and I like how it talks about at least the time you know 2011 when social media started getting you know picking up uh, I talked about how it almost has fragmented the scene a little bit or how you know so many goths have gone online so many scenes have transferred to online that they don't even exist today you know they don't exist in the real world or there may be many many goths online but you know none of them really communicate with each other in a real world social way so it's pretty interesting I uh, also like, you know, Rosetta Stone is a band that I love. I love An Eye for the Main Chance. I think that album is so good. And I always love it whenever anybody mentions Rosetta Stone. So this book almost gets a thumbs up for me just because it talks about Rosetta Stone. And I like the, the first-hand accounts of stuff. Like they have interview excerpts from Dinah Cancer from 45 Grave and Patrick from Community FK and just so many others. One of the criticisms I had, or not necessarily criticism, but one thing I noted about the art of Gothic when I reviewed that book, and it kind of carries over to this, not, not nearly as much, I don't think, is you know how many people in the goth scene only like a certain bands to be associated with goth. You know, if this, this band, oh, I can't believe you mentioned this band, you're not goth if you like this band, you're not blah, 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 you know, all that stuff. It just kind of comes with territory, talking about an evolving sound of goth. And it's hard to pinpoint sometimes whenever bands have huge influence on a culture or very heavily referenced goth. Uh, but, you know, nowadays people are so picky that they might not even want to include it. So you do have them talking about bands like Evanescence, which obviously have a very strong gothic look to them. There is a section on Emily Autumn and I, I don't know if I necessarily agree with her quotes in here. It's hard to say. I don't know. I was conflicted on, on her. I'm not, her, I'm not conflicted on her inclusion in the book because I know, I know even a lot of my viewers, a lot of you really enjoy Emily Autumn. Uh, but I don't know if I necessarily agree with some of her comments in the book. But you have a lot of stuff like that when it tries to talk about you know, modern goth. And I don't know if everyone will be... So accepting of some of the things said in this book, of course it talks about Marilyn Manson's influence on goth. I mean, how could you not if you're talking about a history of goth over time? And of course, you know, Nine Inch Nails and Ministry are mentioned in here. It is very interesting to see kind of predictions. You know, this book was written in 2011 and there's one thing I'd never heard of. I, I don't know. I think I maybe heard of it, but I didn't know anything about it. It's something called Gucci goth. Does anybody know about this? So. There is a section on here about about Gucci Gotham, and well, I yeah, that was interesting. Uh, but it does mention, of course, steampunk, and I you know I I think it does a good job of framing it and explaining why these things are related to goth, and it even does talk about like gothic Lolita, you know, that, the Lolita scene. Uh, obviously, I just I I think I said a whole bunch of times is I'm just not really that interested in that sort of stuff. But it was cool reading about how it came about and uh, you know what people think about it or why people are interested in that. 
Probably the best thing about this book is that I, I'm pretty sure it succeeds in what its goal was, and that is to make goth around the world feel unified. And I think it totally captures that idea of, you know, all these people in completely different walks of life from diff completely different places, completely different set of circumstances, all can relate to music or fashion or a feeling of togetherness in this way, you know, under this term. And while it may take many different forms, it is essentially a very similar thing in most. As far as the printing of this book, I really complimented The Art of Gothic on its printing. Uh, you know, just everything about that book feels quality. Uh, and this book is very similar in a lot of ways, but you know, in other ways, maybe not as amazing. I do have the paperback version of it, and it has that spine that many people will know. It's, it's bound and glued on the left side, and over time, those can wear down pretty heavily, and you get kind of big creases and stuff. Uh, mine is holding up pretty well, even after some pretty heavy reading. Uh, the corners, of course, are going to get a little dinged up with age just you know if you keep pulling it off the shelf or you pull it down to to peruse it occasionally uh, so you know you can expect that as far as the actual pages are concerned they all have a really nice glossy finish to them and the pictures are really really nice and crisp there are a few that have a you know a little bit of an artifacty look i may not pick up on the camera but some of them are a little low resolution, but that's probably just, you know, a problem with the actual images themselves and not actually the printing of the book. I can't expect every single picture for every band to be taken by, you know, a super professional photographer. But the pages are all super glossy and heavyweight. It's really nice. It does not feel cheap at all. In fact, even when I was using, uh, you know, I read with like a book light at night, it was the pages are so glossy that like sometimes it would reflect and I couldn't really read it. Uh, so I don't know if you read with a book light like I do, then maybe be aware of that. I did notice, I will say this, I don't know if it's just my copy or something, but some of the text on some of the photos, like the credited text were cut off a little bit and it wasn't obviously that's nothing major, but I did notice that, you know, probably one of the highlights for people who watch my show, is I think, I can't remember, I think this was one of the books I used to help make the Batcave video that I did because this does have a section on the Batcave and it talks quite a bit about it and its influence over the years. It talks about Johnny Slut's fashion and, and everything. Basically, you know, a lot of things I covered. I, I can't remember if I used this book as a reference, but I think maybe I did. So if you want some information on the Batcave, you know, you fancy yourself a real Batcave goth and you want, you know, some cool photos of it and everything like that. Well, it's in this book. This book has a bit of information about the Batcave and it has photos from it and, and all that stuff. So for some of you, that might just be worth the price of admission alone. Well, I feel like I'm, <coughs> well, I feel like I'm starting to ramble on a bit here. So that is my review of Worldwide Gothic. Oh, by the way, if you want to find the person who's on the cover of this book, you can go to their Instagram. It's right here oh by the way if if years from now like this is outdated and instagram isn't even a thing uh and that link doesn't work then oh, that's a bummer because it's in the video so i hope you've enjoyed my review of worldwide gothic and you can like comment subscribe all that stuff follow me in instagram and all that blah 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 yada 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 oh yeah world got day and and celebrate world got day everybody be happy, celebrate your gothness, especially today, especially this weekend. I know some of you are like a day ahead of me, so hopefully you're even closer to enjoying it during the weekend, and hopefully I'm going to an event this weekend, maybe. Who knows? So, everybody, happy World God Day, or I guess, uh, you know, World God Day. It could be happy or spooky or, you know, mopey or, you know, whatever, whatever form of goth you like. So enjoy it.